welcome to Orlando Attractions Magazine, the show. This week, we'll be chatting with Steve Swanson, who runs the Muppet Cast podcast. And we'll be showing you highlights from all of Orlando's best Halloween events in this special Halloween edition of the show. Plus, all of the regular theme park news, a travel tip, a new contest, and much more. So stay tuned, because this week's episode of the show is starting right, right now. now. This episode of the show is brought to you by Mouse Fan Travel, an authorized Disney vacation planner. Let them plan your next trip at no extra cost. For a no obligation free quote, visit mousefantravel.com. This week's show is coming to you from Theme Park Connection, where you can buy, sell, and trade Disney items and more. Visit their warehouse here in Winter Garden or online at themeparkconnection.com. Welcome to this week's episode of the show. I'm JL. And I'm Scarlett. As you can tell, we're missing a regular someone on the show. Banks is sick this week, so Scarlett, our field reporter, has been so gracious enough to fill in, fill in for him. Scarlett is a regular in all the parks around Orlando. And so, Scarlett, what exactly were you able to get to this week? Well, it's been a busy week. We're getting close to Halloween. So I attended Hallow Scream over at Bush Gardens in Tampa. I went to Brick or Treat with my kids at Legoland. And I did the uh, Disney Parks blog Wreck-It Ralph meetup, and I saw you guys That's there. That's right. We had a great time. Saw an advanced screening of the movie. It's fantastic. You all will definitely want to go see it. Got some free goodies. Played the Fix-It Felix Jr. video game. What was your opinion about that? I thought it was really cute. I thought it was a little hard. I didn't do a whole lot of arcade gaming growing up. But I thought it was really cute and a great addition. I loved it. Right up my alley from my generation of video games. So I was all about it. <laughs> what else did you do this week? Well, I was able to attend the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party with my kids. We loved it. Had on our circus costumes, headed straight out to Storybook Circus and partied it up. We also went to Fantasyland. They are having uh, cast member previews there now. I was able to see the Be Our Guest restaurant. I haven't seen the whole thing. It is amazing. You definitely will want to visit the West Wing. It's, it's possibly a little bit scary for little kids, but for adults and fans of the movie, it's, I'm going to use the word breathtaking. It's got a hologram of the enchanted rose in the corner where petals actually fall from it as it floats in the glass vase. And, oh. and even when you walk into the main ballroom, there's windows all behind it. and behind the windows you can see snow falling and it looks like it's falling on the mountains outside it's just I, I I'm at a little bit of a loss for words about it. it's very exciting I love this addition to the new fantasy land I can't wait to eat there when it opens on November 19th this is definitely going to be an experience well we've got a whole lot more in store for you with this week's episode but first let's go to news in the queue <laughs> Mermaids have been added to the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction at the Magic Kingdom. When you're in the beginning of the ride, you go right past the fog where it's got the screen projection of Blackbeard. Beyond that, if you look either to the left or the right of the boat, in the water you will see splashing water and projections of the mermaids. They also play the song, the really creepy mermaid song from the movie. Yes. And there's the skeleton up on the beach. Yes, the skeleton up on the beach that is laid out in the the digging area is now is no longer a pirate it is now a mermaid and I think it's a great homage to the Pirates of the Caribbean 4 movie especially with the effect of the the, the sounds the mermaids actually singing the songs while you go by yeah it's such a creepy segment I it's really enjoy it eerily beautiful over at Hollywood Studios Wreck-It Ralph and Vanellope Von Schweetz will begin meeting and greeting guests at the Magic of Disney Animation attraction starting this Sunday. The area where they're going to be is themed towards the Game Central Station from the film. And the movie comes out on November 2nd, 2012, and as we already touched on a little bit, it's really fantastic. You definitely <laughs> should go. Definitely. Yes. Late last week, Disney Parks announced their new campaign for 2013, Limited Time Magic. And park guests will be able to find a differently themed event each week when they visit both Walt Disney World and Disneyland next year. 
So for example, like Friday the 13th uh, in September, they're gonna have a big dance party over at Hollywood Studios with the villains. Valentine's Day, all the princesses are gonna actually meet and greet with their princes. There's also gonna be long lost friends character meets where apparently there's gonna be a week where we might get to like vote on characters, I think they had mentioned, that we wanna see in the parks that we don't get to see all the time anymore. Is this the, the Survivor version of Disney? <laughs> we'll see. Or the Disney version of Survivor? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds exciting. I can't wait for this campaign, actually. I feel like this is a very creative, new type of thing that they're approaching with this. I'm excited for 52 weeks of different things. I agree. It's an exciting time to be local. <laughs> <laughs> the Country Bear Jamboree over at Magic Kingdom received a makeover that debuted this week. And from what I understand, there's new curtains, benches, and backdrops for the theater. The Bears have also visited an image consultant and got a bit of an image makeover. Is this right? And Scarlett, you've been. So what's your impression of the changes? Well, I think the uh, refreshed fur and the new costumes all look really great. Although, Gomer, who plays the piano, is yes. like bright red now, kind of, and it's a little interesting. <laughs> but overall, I think they look really great. The new costumes are fantastic. The show changes. Um, they cut out two songs. They cut out a lot of dialogue. Okay. It's a little, the show feels a little abrupt, is the word I keep using. Like, it just feels kind of rushed, and by the time you get settled in your seat and you're cooling down and you have a chance for a break, it's all over. Oh. Yeah. But it's still something worth visiting and going to, do you feel? I definitely think it's still it's still a classic attraction. It's still a really good time. It's for those of us who remember the old attraction, it might be a bit disappointing. But new guests or people who maybe didn't visit it all that often before will still enjoy seeing the country bears. Speaking of something old becoming something new, Spooky Empire's Ultimate Horror Weekend is returning to Orlando, but in a new venue this year at the Hilton Orlando on International Drive. Special guests include the cast of Nightmare on Elm Street 4, including Robert England, as well as Taylor Mayne from Halloween, Iron Singleton from The Walking Dead, and many more. Me, The Walking Dead. Well, it all kicks off with the zombie walk, and for a full report, watch us next week. We'll be bringing that to you with Nicole. If you're visiting the Tampa area, you're going to want to stop by and see the Radley Haunted House. It's open nightly, today, through Halloween. This year's theme is the family roots. It's all about the family whose curse has risen up once again and opened a portal in their house, leading them to the root of the evil curse. It sounds kind of intense. This is for reals, guys. Well, it's one of the most popular and well-known non-theme park haunts in Central Florida. And Halloween events are ongoing through the rest of October. The more scary events, Hallow Scream and Halloween Horror Nights, are happening at Busch Gardens and Universal Studios. And the more family-friendly family events are at SeaWorld, Legoland, and the Magic Kingdom. And don't forget that Epcot's Food and Wine Festival is also ongoing. You can see the Pointer Sisters in concert tonight, then Sister Hazel tomorrow through Sunday, and Billy Ocean next Monday through Wednesday. This week's Hidden Mickey is in the Magic Kingdom, in the last part of the Haunted Mansion ride, to the right of the opera singing lady, it, it would be her left, is a ghost resembling the Grim Reaper. He is holding up his left arm, and hanging from his left hand is a cloth with markings at the top that form a classic three-circle hidden Mickey. It's hard to see. You have to turn way right when you're in your vehicle to spot this one, but it's my favorite hidden Mickey in the Magic Kingdom. Well, Halloween season is coming to a close, and we've been lucky enough to attend so many of the local events around Orlando. There's definitely been a lot going on. I think my favorite one this year has for sure been Hollow Scream over at Bush Gardens. It was super fun, it was really scary, and we had a great time. What was your favorite? Well, always for my family, a classic is the not-so-scary Halloween party over at the Magic Kingdom. We just can't get enough of that Boo to You parade. It's just a great, fun, family-friendly event. It's a big hit with our family, too. Yes, well, uh, right now we're gonna be sharing with you some of the highlights of what's been going on here in Orlando over the Halloween season, so sit back and enjoy. This is my 
first time ever doing this. Kind of a little bit nervous. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Halloween Horror Nights. Here are the things that I think you all need to do when you come on out. Definitely don't miss Silent Hill. If you like being scared, this is clearly the most disturbing house of all of them. Also make sure that you don't miss the Gothic house. It is so artistically well done with the gargoyles and the architecture in a very eerie way. It's also very beautiful and impressive. You also need to make sure that you go to the dead end house. The special effects in this house, in my opinion, are the best of all the houses. Very impressive, very scary. You will be freaked out. <laughs> Another must see is The Walking Dead House. If you are a fan of this show, you cannot miss it. It is like living the show. I myself am a fan and I was very impressed and very freaked out. Please make sure you go through this one. And especially the scare zone that surrounds the house. It is, it is just, how do you explain this? You feel like you are among The Walking Dead, basically. So come on out to Halloween Horror Nights. It's going to be select nights all throughout the rest of October. Thanks so much for joining us. I loved it at the end. Halloween Horror Nights 2012, running through select nights. Nah. <laughs> running on select nights throughout the rest of October. What happened? Oh, there's the cockroach. That's just as scary as everything else. It's coming to eat you, Banks. Welcome to Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party here at the Magic Kingdom. I'm Bill McKim and this is Fix It Felix. I can fix it! Alright, so there's an awesome exclusive just for the Halloween Party with the Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. And Quinn, you want to talk about this? Right here. It's... It has Chippendale. It's called Chippendale's Bag of Tricks. Uh-huh. I believe a party bag like it holds candy mm -hmm. like comes up and throws candy at the villain and that's awesome and these actually do work in the game yes they work in the game and you can only get them at the Halloween party only one per person don't be an unwitting stooge to this chipmunk subterfuge that's what it says there you, know? you go so don't mess with the chipmunks Funny. never I love the Halloween party. Did you have a good time? Yeah, it was awesome. Oh my gosh, the fireworks are probably the best Disney fireworks out there. Oh, they're, they're great. I like the uh, Boo to You parade. Parade was great. That of course, was... candy. I think I beat you with the candy. Oh, I I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to measure that. After. All right, all right, all right. That's all good. We'll count it out. We'll count it out. Okay. This is the beginning of my favorite time of the year. I love Halloween. I love Christmas. Oh. And hey, Phineas the Ferb. Whoa. Oh, cool. Oh, you've never done Scream Cam before. Yeah, never done it. Welcome to Oglethorpe! Oh, ah, okay! Oh, Jesus. Ah! oh Jesus Christ. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Dead bodies everywhere. Oh, God! I think you had a religious experience going through there. <laughs> I'm here with my troop, Margo, Miller, and Ellie. We have the Wild Arctic Ride, which is always here at SeaWorld, but for the Halloween Spooktacular, it actually snows for the occasion.
Where should you go to find out about the greatest theme parks and attractions on Earth? Orlando Attractions Magazine. Get the best information, photos, travel tips, tricks, and reviews from Orlando Attractions Magazine. Whether it's new, unique, big or small, or just one of your theme park favorites, we cover it all in Orlando Attractions Magazine. Each issue features Central Florida's thrills and excitement delivered directly to you. Check out a free preview and subscribe today at attractionsmagazine.com. Well, it just wouldn't be a Halloween episode of the show without ridiculous costume changes. I'm currently dressed in the Disney Store Tigger costume. Incredibly flattering. Thank you to Theme Park Connection for letting me wear it. And I'm here to honor the opening of Storybook Circus in the Magic Kingdom as a ringmaster. Very cool. A couple weeks ago, you got to talk to Steve Swanson, right? From Muppet Cast? I did. It was my complete honor. We brought him on the show, and I would talk to him about his journey as a podcaster while doing the Muppet Cast. So let's go ahead and hear what he had to say. Hey everyone, we're here with Steve Swanson, host of the Muppet Cast, which has been going about five years now. It's a podcast dedicated to all things Jim Henson. Now, Steve, why don't you tell us a little bit about your podcast and the things that you cover? Absolutely. So the Muppet Cast is the, I believe, the only podcast on the web dedicated to the work of Jim Henson and the Muppets. Uh, we have been around for just a little over five years now, which is crazy to think about. Uh, but yeah, we cover everything from Sesame Street to Disney's Muppet Studio to the Jim Henson Company and all the things that they do. Uh, and covering things old and new from classic Sesame Street and old Muppet Show episodes, everything right up into the new movie that came out last year. Fantastic. Now what was your motivation for starting this podcast? Well, I'm a huge Disney fan, of course. Uh, but uh, you know, I thought what, once it's time, I really wanted to start a new show about uh, around 2007, but there were already so many Disney podcasts out there. Yes. And uh, instead of just being another voice in the crowd, I thought, well, hey, I love the Muppets, so let's try doing a Muppet podcast. And uh, I got a chance to see some of my real heroes in radio do some live broadcasting out there as well. So I kind of got to see how this whole sort of production comes together. And um, so I just decided to, to put something together around April 2007 and put it out there and it's just gotten a big response ever since. It's been quite a journey for you. It really has. And along that journey, what would you say is your most cherished moment? Oh boy, there are so many. Okay. Try um, to pick one. Oh man, okay. I would say sitting on the other side of Skype knowing that any second the phone is going to, well, Skype is going to ring and it's going to be Frank Oz on the other end of the phone <laughs> oh, talking yeah. to you. Yes. I would get giddy about that too. That was pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he actually came on in April 2008 uh, for a one year anniversary uh, tribute episode to Jim Henson and he came on to talk about his career and his life with Jim Henson. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, I really can't quite imagine something that spectacular. You've gotten to talk to quite a few of the I pretty have. big names involved yeah, with yeah. Jim Henson. Absolutely, yeah. Um, a lot of Sesame Street folks especially come on the show recently and uh, you know it's that it's always a lot of fun when uh, you get to talk with some of these characters that you've seen growing up with and who taught you about life and about your the world that you live in and uh, then suddenly they're talking directly to you and yes. Oscar the Grouch is making fun of you on your own show. <laughs> <laughs> If I ever had a moment where I could actually talk to Kermit, I am pretty sure that I would faint. Mm -hmm. That's true. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing when you get to talk to some of those characters like that. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Well, the Muppets and Jim Henson really has been a part of so many of our lives. As you were saying, uh, sure. most of us at this point have been weaned on Jim Henson. Kermit the Frog was my very first love. Mm -hmm. So for people like myself and other Muppet fans out there, when they come to the Orlando area, what would you tell them that are the, the must-dos when they're here? Well, for me, it's always Muppet Vision 3D. Uh, I, I started calling it the mothership for some reason on my show. <laughs> it sort of is for Muppet fandom, you know? It, it's the one place where you go and there's just this beautiful Muppety kind of world that you can step into. Um, I think it's one of the best pre-shows in the park. Agreed. Uh, I think it's really one of the better 3D productions in the park, really. Uh, so I, I always, I like to take people through there. Actually, I just did this yesterday. I met up a new uh, listener 
right there in the Muppet Courtyard and took them all around the building because there's things all over there. And that's the thing. Don't just go in the 3D movie. Walk all around the building because there's these wonderful Muppet parody posters and uh, Muppet Labs things with Bunsen Honeydew and Beaker and all these just wonderful little visual jokes, more than you'll ever see. And that's why I love coming back to it is because it's all I in the always details. see something new. It is. There's so many details there that you'll never see all of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all these funny little gags and these sort of Henson-esque kind of things. Uh, I saw something brand new yesterday, which uh, if you walk around the side of the building, you might know the story about the Muppet Pipes that Jim and Frank painted at the NBC studios when they were going on. I don't know this story. Okay, well, should you ever get up to uh, NBC in New York, uh, they have a tour of the, uh, the old dressing room where they waited in to go on, I believe it was Ed Sullivan. And anyways, they got bored and they started painting on the pipes and the plumbing back there. <laughs> Fantastic. And they have a little parody of that around the drinking fountains in the Muppet Courtyard. They painted all the pipes and everything, so. I love it, I yeah, love it. Yeah, Now Steve, hmm. most of the time when people come to Orlando, we do think of Muppet Vision 3D, you know, the Absolutely. Disney Muppet Mecca. Um, but are there, is there a presence of the Muppets elsewhere in Orlando? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can go just down the road to SeaWorld and you can see there's the Sesame Street characters out there. Um, and they do a lot of fun things. There's some stage shows that they do out there from time to time and you can always sort of meet some of the characters over there. And at Bush Gardens, and this is really cool, they have a, uh, a Muppet sort of uh, safari themed area. And so there's Muppet stage shows, there's Muppet, I believe there's even character meals, there's Muppet meet and greets with the Sesame Street characters as well so the little kids can get the Disney side of the Muppets at the Disney parks and then just go right down the road to Busch Gardens and get the Sesame Street side of the house too. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Steve, thank you so much for taking time to be with us here on the show today. Absolutely, my pleasure. You all can follow him on Twitter. You are at? I am at MuppetCast and you can always, if you have any questions or comments about the Muppets and the MuppetCast or anything else, you can always email me, M-E, at MuppetCast.com. This week's tip will help you get to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter just a little bit faster. Since the Wizarding World is so popular, you'll probably want to get there before the crowds do in the morning at Universal's Islands of Adventure. Just head towards Seuss Landing, and just after you cross the bridge, turn left and take the Zax Bypass. It's a little shortcut behind Seuss Landing that takes you past the north going and south going Zax and leads right to the bridge to the Lost Continent and the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. The next time you plan a Disney vacation, book with a travel agency that's been specifically designated as an authorized Disney vacation planner. Unlike some other agencies, many of our agents' exclusive knowledge of Walt Disney World can help you get the most out of your vacation. And the assistance of our travel professionals can help you get a customized Disney vacation that's just right for you, your family, and your budget. Start planning your magical vacation today by visiting mousefantravel.com. Welcome, Foolish Mortals, back to the show. Thank you so much to Theme Park Connection for providing us with these fantastic costumes from two of Orlando's spookiest attractions. These costumes are for sale here, so if you're interested, be sure to drop in. Now, for last week's contest, we asked you where Titanic the Experience is located. It's on International Drive. Thanks for your responses. The winner of the cast member exclusive gifts from Theme Park Connection is Bob McLeod from Auburn, Maine. Congratulations, Bob! For this week's contest, we are again giving away a great prize from Theme Park Connection. This is the Mickey Mouseker statue. This is a cast exclusive for manager level or above people who leave the company or if they do something really great and really above and beyond, they're awarded this statue. And it'll normally have a little name plate and everything with their name, but you guys will w get the chance to win this one. It's kind of serious. All you have to do is send us an email letting us know what your favorite Halloween activity is here in the Orlando area. Now you're going to send your answer along with your first and last name and your city and state for this week's contest to info at attractionsmagazine.com and answer by the end of the day next Monday, October 29th, 2012. You can only enter once per week and you can only win once per year. Now it's time for your shout outs. We have a lot this week, so hold tight. 
first goes to David Durham and his daughter Abby, who watch the show every week and will be visiting Orlando next April. Thanks for watching and we hope you have a great time. Next shout out is from Simon Isbell to his girlfriend Julie. They're subscribers of the magazine and watch our show each week. Thanks for the support guys. Hope you had fun on your trip to Orlando. Now a big shout out from Banks personally to Jennifer Cola Iuda for her birthday, which was on Tuesday. She was the very first person to find Banks at Ripley's during October Oddtoberfest and say have fun. Thanks for the support, Jennifer and her mom, Lori. Shout out to the Davy family who are coming out to Disney World this weekend for their son and daughter's first visits. Thanks for watching and for subscribing to the magazine as well. Now for a few Twitter shout outs. Hello to Malcolm Perrin, who is headed to Orlando in just a few days. Critter23, Braden Godin, who watches the show every week from work. Lauren Del Monte and Kyle Ick Hassel from Facebook, who is currently visiting Orlando. Our last shout out goes to Kevin Friend from the United Kingdom. He and his family love watching the show and are returning to visit Disney World again next year for the second time to stay at the Art of Animation Resort and see all of the new attractions in Fantasyland. Hope you have a blast when you come and visit us. Special thanks to Mouse Fan Travel, an authorized Disney vacation planner. Let them plan your next trip at no extra cost. For a free, no obligation quote, visit mousefantravel.com. And thanks to Theme Park Connection, where you can buy, sell, and trade Disney and theme park items. Visit their warehouse here in Winter Garden or online at themeparkconnection.com. Now, if you enjoy the show, please visit our sponsors and let them know. The show just wouldn't be possible without them. Remember, you can watch the show each and every week on YouTube, iTunes, and Bright House Cable TV, Channel 300 in Central Florida and 340 in Tampa. Also, be sure to visit attractionsmagazine.com for news and videos throughout the week and to subscribe to our print magazine. The fall issue is available in print and in our iPhone and iPad apps and on Nook for Android devices. Thank you so much for joining us today on the special Halloween episode of the show. And again, another big thank you to Theme Park Connection for providing us with these fantastic costumes that we got to share with you guys today. Go out there, have a safe and happy Halloween, and don't forget, have, have fun. fun! And hurry back. Now the crypt goes creak and the tombstones quake. Spooks come out for a swing and wake. Happy hunts materialize. And begin to vocalize. Grim, grim ghosts come out to socialize. Now don't close your eyes, no try to hide. Or silly spook miss it by your side. Shrouded in a dark sky. They pretend to terrorize. Grim giving ghosts come, come out to socialize. Secret Blooper of the Week. Welcome to this week's episode of the show. I'm JL. Over, I'm, Do I say my you own say, name? And I'm Scarlet. Yeah. Oh, okay. The Country Bear Jamboree over at Magic Kingdom received a makeover that pre. <laughs> will still enjoy seeing the country bears. I don't know how to close this. Special guests this year include the cast of Nightmare on Elm Street. Street. <laughs> Boulevard. <I mean>. Avenue. <laughs> I said, shoot. Parkway. Thank you to Theme Park Connection and JL. I'm here to honor. <laughs> Sorry. Zoe <laughs> Fell. <laughs> I felt it. Bob McLeod from Auburn, Maine. And I was, welcome, foolish mortals, to the show. That was dumb. That was really stupid how I said that. Back to Orlando Attractions Magazine, the show. Sorry. <laughs> Our next shout out is to Simon Isbell and his girlfriend Julie. They're subscribers and 